The gray-haired guy has on a beret, talking so much political stuff to us. He's the one who's hosting. So how does he get to do that? Are you kidding? He's one of the strongest of the church's vertebrae. In fact, he may be the spine. See, he's been a member. Gee, Gene goes back as far as, as I can recall. Um, on board for many years. And what's more, he's a skipper. You gotta listen to one who knows the waters. On the sea, wind, and the waves, teach one to be observant and mindful. Oh man, do I know that. Keeps you watchful of people too. An eye for the loving ones and mindful of the others. You must understand, man, that one more thing. See that gal? She's gonna dance. Yeah, man, for an older, she looks like she can really kick ass. You betcha, Chester. Who but a handsome, bright young man could have hooked a woman with like Dolores? Oh, those many years back. Thanks for giving me a clue, mister. Looks like I can pick up some tips from you guys here. Now these are some poems that describe my past. No, they were not written in the past. The Wee Wo and the Tonto. Water in the buckets on the porch bench. Dip was immersed, awaiting the next kid. My turn, said Danny, my plump little cousin, slosh the pan full, disregarding all rules. One dipper for hands, we were told. Pour the dirty water on the camellia plants. Grandma explained, the less we used, say laurels pour back, and also our well's water. The pump at the store sourced our water, access to stream well below ground. In the pasture, we'd see a small creek fed by a spring, its source, the well's same stream. As a boy of seven, I chose to name that creek, and a second that had convened the Weebo and the Tonto. Feisty little beavers built a dam just below the juncture, giving us kids a water hole. We took care to wade where the bank was steep, for opposite in the sand, Grandma's cows got their drink. Aunt Emma said those brooks went on to meet other small streams, soon to be Cherry Stone Creek. When 10 or 11, I got into maps. I traced the creek and show my aunts. Cherry Stone Creek soon met others, then became the banister, drained the farms of all my uncles and others. Once in a while, we drive to Danville, that's in Virginia. There on the bridge, our banister joined the dam. Ingenious settlers had built a dam, impounding these very red waters, and made a sluice for power. Serving a town of then 5,000 was found quite lacking as industry grew, demanding more juice. A few miles downstream, on the river, now the Roanoke, the state constructed the Bugs Island Dam. It was then, the 1950s, lifestyles had changed, as well the uses of water. Winged towers of steel, bearing wires to carry thousands of watts each to the power-thirsty farmers. The reservoir created became a treasure, miles of sand beaches, mooring for power and sail. Water we tasted back on the farm continued seaward to the tide water of Virginia. Joined by the Rapidan and Stuart, Roanoke became the James, flooded the marshes, nursing the pines. Harvested for bark by Native Americans, now provided logs for our plywood nation. As our river neared the sea before the roads, 
its wide, shallow shoulders became beds for our clams. <coughs> Oysters, too, among the shellfish, once the treat of a few, became available to all. I lived in Norfolk on Hampton Roads. I hear buoys at night afloat on those waves. I knew those waters from our vast watershed came at least in part from those two small streams, which I had once lovingly called Grandma's Twin Creeks, the Wewo and the Tonto. Ain't nothing I'd trade for my place, you hear. I sat by my front window, without foliage near and far, framed the stationary building. There are the purposeful people in the neighborhood. They have errands to do, schedules to meet. There are two visitors sauntering through Berkeley. They seek food and drink, and perhaps DVDs for the night's lay-in. <coughs> At night, I place with the pleasure of touch my nightshades, material of discount fabrics, unbleached muslin cut to size and hemmed, hung on wood dowels and half by half trim, ripped from found near clear two by fours. I enjoy my handwork. I may then set up my tripod, good lighting to photograph my art. This, a giant maple leaf found last fall, and finally mounted on a serious black clipboard, that from artist and craftsman on Shattuck. This dry mount, if you will, a square about 20 by 20, I place on a reed basket, elliptical if seen by the spider above, and looking at me as I sit in my rolling office chair, found on Acton in my early birthday days, like a shallow cat's basket with ends upturned, a scotia tube, upturned a scotia tube, a perfect cup in which my maple shall live. Oh, and the basket rests upon a super modern tubular fan housing. It stands about four inches high, with a vented face of about seven inches, I'd say. And this vertical element is by no means dominant, or since I found it in my corner, it never worked, huh? Ideal for a pedestal for art. Photos look good, digital done, camera stored. Time now for some homework. I clear the clutter of receipts, notes to do, warning pages, couple of other notebooks. I mean, we all need a plethora of notebooks, no? Expenses, family, projects alone, those with others. Ah, where? Do they all go? You see the 15 or so file boxes, all found along College Avenue, while sufficing to contain my files, present such a mountainous task to actually survey and selectively toss, of course to then organize the rest, that they all remain their contents. But their casework, charming in their variety, or neat phalanxes along the several walls of my marvelous two-room studio. So space is cleared, I roll over to my desk. Oh, and it is a zinger. Her surface is, oh, half-inch thick. Composition board, finished, micro-thin, with a veneer of imitation, Flemish, finish, flawed. Now, before I sit at my luxurious desk, you must know the ardor consumed in her arrival. Yeah, she was a lot of love. It was clearly imbued with destiny. Was off to the film archive <coughs> a couple of years back. Passing Stewart Street, I spotted her. Wow, that's a great desktop. Would fit perfectly by my large window to the world. The lonely board. I hide her measurements. 28 wide by 5, 10, I'd say. She rested against two barrels, ready for pickup the next day. I carefully picked her up, turned her horizontal, and zip, slid her behind a hedgerow. You stay there, okay? I tooled off for some ancient masterpiece. 
and on my return, voila, you waited. As I said, it was an arduous love. I could manage her by carrying under one arm, but luckily could clench under an armpit, and the arm was just long enough. My fingers became a sea clam, holding her tight. Nice, huh? Yeah, the six or eight blocks were pain, but hey, I could change hands on her side. And now I sit here, my favorite desk, my favorite apartment, and my favorite pleasure, writing for you all here tonight. <laughs>